Hello everyone, uh, I am Shanky Kothari. Uh, this is our sixth lecture and the final lecture uh, regarding international institutions pertaining to economy. Uh, till now we have seen WTO in four parts. Next we had seen IMF, that was the fifth lecture. And in the sixth we would be looking at World Bank. As usual, first I will be taking up a very layman uh, understanding of World Bank and then we will move towards the academic detail. Uh, now, in 1929, with Great Depression, emergence of nationalism, world war and the complete devastation, almost complete devastation of Europe, world countries meet to rebuild the world economy. They talk about three aspects, trade, for trade, they envision ITO, which never came into existence. GATT came into existence in 1948. They talk about monetary matters, balance of payment crisis, currency exchange, valuation. For that, at Britain Woods agreement is done and IMF comes into existence. For developmental, third thing which they talk about is development. For developmental matters, as Europe was completely destroyed, they aim at rebuilding the Europe rebuilding Europe. So they ag agreed to establish International Bank for Reconstruction and Development IBRD. This IBRD along with one another institution which was established in 1960s, IDA, International Development Association, is in layman terms known as World Bank. But Looking at more finer academic details, World Bank is not a bank, it is a group. So World Bank group consists of these two institutions, IBRD, IDA and three more bodies. One is IFC which provides financial needs, which helps financial needs regarding matters for private corporation. MEGA, Multilateral Investment Guarantee Agency which helps ensure non-commercial risk of foreign corporations investing in some other countries and the last is a dispute settlement body so these five bodies that is IBRD or the original body IDA these two known as in common man's terms world bank but world bank group is more broad it consists of IBRD IDA MEGA IFC and that dispute settlement body so this is about World Bank. Uh, we will be looking up at each institution of the World Bank group in more detail. Let us begin our part here. Okay, so we begin it. Uh, uh, as already discussed these uh, some uh, tribal information. 1944 is the establishment year. Washington DC is the headquarters. Uh, currently 189 members uh, and India is one of the founder member of both IMF as well as World Bank. There is one condition that if you want to be a member of IBRD you must first join IMF then only your IBRD membership would be considered. Current chairman David Malpass it belongs to USA. There is one trend uh, a unwritten understanding between Europe and USA that generally chairman or MD of IMF belongs from Europe while chairman of World Bank generally belongs from USA. This has been going on for a long and developing countries have now started objecting to it. Two important publications of World Bank, uh, Global Economic Prospects and Ease of Doing Business report. Now uh, we have discussed in class in detail about uh, ease of doing business report. Just like in IMF we have seen that there are constituencies in World Bank also India has its constitu constituencies same as that in IMF Bangladesh, Bhutan and Sri Lanka. Just like IMF World Bank also has its board of governors for finance minister generally represents it and uh, our alternate governor is Shaktikan Das, that is RBI chairman. 
moving forward uh, there are two goals which world bank has stated officially first is regarding absolute poverty and this is about absolute poverty and second is about relative poverty now what is absolute poverty and relative poverty absolute poverty a line is defined like say this anybody earning less than 1.9 dollars would be considered as poor and anybody earning more than it would be considered as above poverty line and this would be considered as below poverty line thing is that this is somewhat limited in its scope as it doesn't capture various other aspects of poverty just a vulnerability that is more better captured by a concept of relative poverty in case of relative poverty the set of population say i can take any percentage world bank has taken 40 percent those people in the income pyramid who are earning less than the remaining 60 percent of the population are always considered vulnerable that is these people bottom 40 percent are relatively poor as compared to the top 60 percent this one and hence these bottom pyramid people will always be vulnerable from these people like these relatively poor will have less bargaining power with respect to these people and hence and hence these people need to be protected this is what world bank tries to do through its concept of relative poverty hence regarding poverty eradication world bank has two objectives one reduce the absolute poverty kitna karna hai duniya mein three percent of the population se zyada absolutely poor matlab 1.90 dollars se kam par rehne wale nahi hone chahiye dusra relative poverty ko kam karna hai relative poverty matlab jo duniya ki bottom most 40 percent population hai uske welfare ke liye world bank aims to take steps so these are two stated aims of world bank regarding reduction of poverty we will take a look at uh, uh, various institutions of world bank which aim to achieve this target moving forward to the five institutions of world bank group first we'll be looking at ibrd international bank for reconstruction and development now uh, ibrd is the parent organization it was established in 1944 currently it has 189 members and any country who wishes to be member of ibrd first needs to be member of imf uh, its basic idea emerges from reconstruction of Europe due to its destruction after the Second World War. Now, point is IBRD provides loans to middle income and poor countries who are capable enough to repay back this loan. And the loan that is provided is generally close to market rates, mostly just lower than the market rates. Why market rates? So, भी market में उधारी का rate है, उसी पर IBRD के तहत भी अगर आप loan लेने जाएँ, तो आपको उसी पर loan मिलेगा. Market rates से slightly lower इसलिए, क्योंकि पहले IBRD खुद जाकर market से उधारी लेता है, फिर ये जो उधार लाया गया पैसा है, आगे credit worthy poor countries ko loan par chalata hai baat kya hai ki you might be thinking why a country directly goes to market why not a country directly goes to market and takes the loan point is if that poor country goes to market and takes the loan it will be charged higher interest rate but ibrd is a part of world bank 
has high credit worthiness that's why it gets loans from market at comparatively lower rates and then it lends further at lower rates to credit worthy poor countries generally the loans are for long term developmental purpose like education healthcare uh, infrastructure construction policy reforms etc next institution international development association uh, idea now idea was established in 1960 currently has 173 members any membership of idea is dependent on a country having membership of ibrd bina ibrd mein membership liye a country cannot be membership of idea now ida's concept is that it provides close to 0% or at 0% loans to poorest countries ek tarike se kai bar ida poor countries ko seedhe seedhe grants ya aid hi provide kar deta hai now where does ida find its funding to a great extent idea does not takes loans from directly from market what it does is it gets contribution donations or replenishment jaise technically kaha jata hai replenishment from its developed countries member nations to wo member nation jo developed category 1 mein aa rahe hain unse ye अपने सोर्सेज जुटाता है दीज कंट्रीज कीप रेगुलरली प्रोवाइडिंग रिप्लेनिशमेंट और फंडिंग टू आई डी ए दिस फंड इट सेल्फ इज लेंड बाई आई डी ए फर्दर टू पुअरेस्ट कंट्रीज पुअरेस्ट कंट्री का क्राइटीरिया क्या है सो आई डी एज डिफाइन कि अ कंट्रीज पर कैपिटा इनकम शुड बी बिलो वन थाउजेंड वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी फाइव in the fiscal year 2020 or dusri condition ki that country should be unable to get concessional loans from market or it should have poor credit worthiness ki wo khud market se ja kar borrow nahi kar pa rahi hai these are two conditions based on which idea lends to poorest countries jo loan hota hai again it is for very long term as long as maybe se 40 years it may be and again it is only for nations or countries not for private companies third thing this loan is almost interest free fourth thing this loan is for developmental purpose like healthcare drinking water sanitation recently world bank that is ida and ibrd have announced that they would be providing india 1 billion dollar of funding to take care of covid response in this they have clarified this may be for anything related to covid like say for procuring new test kits for covid or for sanitizers for mask for ventilators anything etc so this is about ida ida has i have just uh, said it Uh, in the beginning idea gets its funding through replenishments from part 1 members these are generally developed countries and these are lent to part 2 members who are recipient countries generally poorest countries india is also one of the beneficiary of idea but you might be thinking ki india is not the poorest country as its per capita is income is close to 7000 dollars in terms of purchasing power parity it is definitely much more than 1175 dollars then how come some countries having a higher per capita income than this threshold like vietnam pakistan are eligible for ida funding since the absolute number of poors jo garib hai absolute numbers mein in countries mein kahi zyada hai percentage mein it might appear india is say 20% poor but that 20% is of 130 crore indians that is a very large number for so for such countries idea has given extension ki we would be providing loans to these countries at concessional 
rates these countries are known as blend countries in spite of having a higher per capita income they keep getting loan from idea in a way currently india is able to borrow from both ibrd and ida the third organization is international finance corporation ifc ifc was established in 1956 it has 184 members now unlike the previous two which we have seen ibrd and ida ifc does not lend to governments ifc helps finance or arrange finance for the private sector in a way it helps development of private sector in a country point is that ki sirf sarkar ko funding karke sarkar ke bharose development nahi raha ja sakta we need to develop private enterprises in particular in almost all countries particularly developing and least developed that's why ifc may provide direct funding to private corporations and companies or it may help these con- companies raise loans from market generally ifc provides funding to those corporations which are unable to themselves garner funding from the open market at reasonable rates in this context ifc has issued uh, one important financial instrument masala bonds now what are masala bonds see uh, if indian some private enterprise say ola wants to raise funding from abroad say usa it might raise that funding but it will be in dollar terms and hence the repayment also needs to be in dollar terms repaying both principal and interest in dollars is a big risk for a indian company because there might be fluctuation of dollar rupee if rupee depreciates with respect to dollar a higher outflow of dollars will happen at the time of repayment to overcome this issue of currency fluctuation ifc has issued the concept of masala bonds where a company goes to a foreign country and there it raises borrowings at lower interest rate but not in dollar terms but in local currency in case in case of our example ola would go to usa and raise funds in रूपी टर्म्स एंड हेंस रीपेमेंट विल ऑल्सो बी इन रूपी इससे फ़ायदा ये होता है कि जो करेंसी कन्वर्जन है डॉलर रूपी अगर रूपी बहुत ज़्यादा डेप्रिशिएट भी हो गया तब भी ओला के ऊपर जो लाइबिलिटी है उसमें ना तो बढ़ोतरी होगी ना कमी होगी सो ये जो मसाला बॉन्ड आप यू एस ए में जाकर इशू करेंगे आपसे शायद खरीदने के इच्छुक बहुत कम लोग होंगे मे बी for various reasons like they don't have faith in you ki you will be repaying back that's why it is ifc which has backed this masala bonds ek bar ek world bank group ki backing ho gayi ifc then you can find many buyers of this masala bond so the first masala bonds uh, are issued by ifc and the same ifc has also issued green masala bonds which will be investment to be raised for climate friendly purpose maybe for solar panel installation windmill installation etc the fourth organization of world bank is multilateral investment guarantee agency mega we'll understand it with one example suppose we have a indian corporation say gmr infrastructure it creates its it constructs infrastructure say airports it has got a contract in maldives now uh, gmr invests there establishes airport constructs airport but due to some political reasons may maybe there a coup happens takta palat hua and gmr is forced out from maldives उसका पूरा इन्वेस्टमेंट जो रहा वो अधर में चला गया वो अपना पूरा इन्वेस्टमेंट प्रॉफिट के साथ रिकवर नहीं कर पाए 
जनरली इस तरीके के को राइट्स वॉर्स आर विजिबल इन डेवलपिंग एंड लीज डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज लाइक दैट ऑफ सम इन अफ्रीका तब इन देशों में शायद कोई इस तरीके से फॉरेन इन्वेस्टर आकर इन्वेस्ट करना नहीं चाहेगा बट देन इट विल कम्प्लीटली हॉल्ट द ग्रोथ ऑफ दीज कंट्रीज दैट्स वाई मेगा ऑफर सच फॉरन इन्वेस्टर्स इंश्योरेंस अगेंस्ट सच नॉन कमर्शियल रिस्क माइंड यूर नॉट कमर्शियल रिस्क बिजनेस चल रहा है ठीक ठाक लेकिन लॉस हो गया उसमें दैट इज़ नॉट कवर्ड कोई नॉन कमर्शियल कारण से अगर लॉस हो गया जैसे वॉर पॉलिटिकल इंस्टेबिलिटी एक्सेट्रा देन मीगा वुड प्रोवाइड इंश्योरेंस कवर फॉर सच फॉरन इन्वेस्टर्स इन्वेस्टिंग इन पुअर डेवलपिंग और लीज डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज इसका फायदा ये होगा कि दीज कंट्रीज वुड बी एबल टू अट्रैक्ट फॉरन इन्वेस्टमेंट लास्ट सी टिल नाउ वी हैव सीन द फोर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन मीगा आई एफ सी आई डी ए एंड आई बी आर डी इंडिया इज अ मेम्बर कंट्री ऑफ दीज फोर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन द फिफ्थ दैन द लास्ट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अंडर वर्ल्ड बैंक ग्रुप इज इंटरनेशनल सेटल सेंटर फॉर सेटलमेंट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट डिस्प्यूट्स विच इज अ इंटरनेशनल फैसिलिटी फॉर सेटलिंग इन्वेस्टमेंट डिस्प्यूट्स बिटवीन टू एंटिटीज जनरली टू एंटिटीज आर फॉरन टू ईच अदर मे बी से सम नीदरलैंड कंपनी हेज इन्वेस्टेड इन से यू के एंड सम डिस्प्यूट अराइजेज सो दे मे कम टू इंटरनेशनल सेटलमेंट फॉर सेटलमेंट ऑफ इन्वेस्टमेंट डिस्प्यूट्स इंडिया इज नॉट अ मेम्बर ऑफ आई सी एस आई डी बिकॉज इंडियाज ऑब्जेक्शन इज इट्स टर्म्स आर हेविली बायर्सड इन फेवर ऑफ डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज सो दीज आर दी फाइव ग्रुप अंडर वर्ल्ड दीज आर दी फाइव ऑर्गेनाइजेशन अंडर वर्ल्ड बैंक ग्रुप now uh, world bank group and india we will have a very brief discussion uh, india is uh, one of the largest borrower from world bank as we take a lot of borrowing from both ibrd and uh, ida for developmental purpose uh, india is also one of the founding members of ifc international finance corporation it has specifically helped india in terms of issuing मसाला बॉन्ड्स जो कि हमारे फॉरेन एक्सचेंज को प्रिजर्व करने में और साथ में विदेशों से उधारी लेने में बहुत अच्छा टूल पोटेंशियल टूल हो सकता है आई हैव जस्ट डिस्कस अबाउट आईसीएसआईडी इंडिया इज नॉट अ मेंबर ऑफ आईसीएसआईडी इट सेज दैट द कन्वेंशन इज नॉट फेयर एंड इट्स हैविली बायस इन फेवर ऑफ डेवलप्ड कंट्रीज blend countries i have already discussed uh for the uh considering from 2019 onwards india is expected to borrow about 30 billion dollars from uh world bank now what are the reforms that are to be done in world bank Uh, again world bank is a ideology driven organization by ideology driven organization i mean it is unlike wto wto mein one country one vote ka system hai jo members chahenge wahi hoga kal ko agar members chahenge ki sabhi desh socialism ko execute karenge apni apni trade policies mein to wo hoga लेकिन वर्ल्ड बैंक और आई एम एफ आर आइडियोलॉजिकली ड्रिवन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन दे आर ड्रिवन बाय द कैपिटलिस्टिक आइडियोलॉजी इस कारण से जब भी वर्ल्ड बैंक और आई एम एफ दे प्रोवाइड फंडिंग दे प्रोवाइड अंडर स्ट्रिक्ट कंडीशनैलिटीज ऑफ जनरली दीज आर लिबरलाइजेशन प्राइवेटाइजेशन एंड ग्लोबलाइजेशन दिस इट सेल्फ इज नोन एज स्ट्रक्चरल एडजस्टमेंट प्रोग्राम ऑफ वर्ल्ड बैंक इट हैज़ बीन सिवियरली क्रिटिसाइज बिकॉज इट इम्पोज फ्री मार्केट एल पी जी पॉलिसीज ऑन ऑल कंट्रीज इर रिस्पेक्टिव ऑफ द एबिलिटी ऑफ दैट कंट्री टू इम्प्लीमेंट इट इसका नतीजा ये हुआ है कि कम कंडीशनैलिटीज के साथ लोन देने वाले कुछ ऑर्गेनाइजेशन जैसे 
Asia Infrastructure Investment Bank emerge हुए हैं but these are a cause of concern especially for India because these are driven by largely funded by China so what might happen कि जो एक multilateralism की strength develop हुई है World Bank और IMF के थ्रू वो strength weaken हो सकती है दुनिया world might again move towards unipolar economic order driven by China this is a cause of concern and it requires World Bank to reform itself ताकि इस तरीके की unipolarity दुनिया में कम से कम हो so this is about World Bank so this completes our part of economy related international institutions from the next lecture we would be starting with uh, analysis of the latest budget 2020-21 thank you